Wow, the NASA hotline is ringing off the hook. The call center operator is all sweaty from stress. They barely have time to answer the phone, and all the messages they get say the same thing. There's something glowing on the moon. Indeed, hundreds and thousands of amateur astronomers were watching the moon that night. And suddenly, there was a bright light on it, as if someone had lit a powerful spotlight on the surface. Scientists immediately began to look for an explanation to this phenomenon. They first thought it was simply the glow of an airplane flying between the observers and the moon. But then it wouldn't have been seen by so many people from different parts of the world at the same time. The next suspects were the Starlink satellites. Theoretically, one of them could have played a cruel trick on amateur astronomers. They could have mistaken the small satellite's light for a flash of light on the moon. But then again, if the satellite were the culprit of this mess, the flare wouldn't be static, but moving. While some scientists continue to search for an answer to this mystery, others decide to investigate the phenomenon in more detail. For this purpose, they have built a new telescope north of Seville, Spain. The conditions there are quite suitable for observing the moon. The telescope has two cameras, controlled remotely from the campus in Germany. If both cameras pick up any unusual phenomenon on the surface of the moon, it will quickly zoom the telescope there to see what's going on. It'll also require advanced artificial intelligence to teach the cameras to distinguish between the unexplained phenomenon on the moon and the light of an airplane, a satellite, or a small meteorite that just entered the Earth's atmosphere. While the telescope is doing its investigation, we already have a theory that may explain the appearance of such bright round flashes on the moon's surface. So, the moon influences the tides of the seas and oceans on Earth with its gravitational force. But the Earth can affect the moon in the same way. Only the force will be 32 and a half times stronger. While the moon orbits the Earth, at one point, it may be as close to our planet as possible. Then the force of the interaction will be greatest. At this point, tidal forces may force cracks in the surface of the moon to open and release gas from its interior. A powerful jet of gas will lift the lunar dust with it. And what we see as a bright flash through our telescopes is really just a fog of dust, which is round and reflects sunlight well. If you look at it from a distance, it really does look like a flash. As the dust rises, we think there's been a small explosion. And that flash gradually fades as the dust settles down. The moon's surface has millions of craters. But something else has drawn a lot of attention to it. A giant rare hole that turned out to be a tube. It was found when the Japanese lunar orbiter was gathering data around the moon's skylight, the tube's entrance. Researchers found a specific echo pattern that suggested there was a hollow area. They discovered more echo patterns at a couple of places near the hole, so there could be more lunar tubes there. But in this big tube, you could place an entire football field and the pit could swallow it whole. It's irregularly shaped and 427 feet in diameter. Scientists think that there could be secret caves, a tunnel system, or an entire geological wonderland under the surface. It could be a good shelter for astronauts that land on the moon, or even be a harbor for a lunar colony. No one ever managed to stay on the moon for more than three days because of the conditions on the satellite. It has a wide range of temperatures, low atmosphere, and no magnetic field that would protect life on the surface from things like radiation or harsh sun rays. Astronauts wear spacesuits, but they can't protect them over long periods of time. But a lava tube could. When a lava flow cools, it gets a hard crust, which later thickens and creates a roof over that same lava. It continues to flow, but when it stops, the channel can drain, which results in an empty tube. Our planet also has lava tubes, but they're not as big as the one found on the moon. There's a special type of tree called a moon tree. It's grown from seeds that were taken into space during one of the missions and then returned back to Earth. You can find this kind of tree growing across the U.S. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Something Neil Armstrong, the first human that set foot on the surface of the moon, said. He was there with Buzz Aldrin, spending two and a half hours on the lunar surface. Preparation for this project took a couple of years, 
and all the equipment the astronauts carried weighed over 170 pounds. It wasn't easy to land on the moon. There were lots of attempts in history that ended in failure. For example, astronauts in one of the Apollo programs had enough fuel to rocket people to the lunar surface in a mere three days. But they wanted to save on fuel, so it took them over a month to get there. There's no GPS to tell you where exactly to land. The spacecraft travels fast, and it has to slow down in a vacuum with not enough information. But since 1969, 12 people have already walked there. The moon is the only space object humans have visited so far. The rest have only been visited by robots. But all these people were just there for a short visit. NASA announced their program to work on a permanent presence on the moon. That would help scientific research and could be a good point to learn how to do the same on other missions, like the one on Mars. Imagine being the 13th person going to the moon. Scary silence, moon dust under your feet, and nothing but an endless black sky with stars all over you. But you have no time to admire the view. There are many issues you'd need to figure out before landing. First of all, our bodies are like machines that are adapted to conditions on Earth, like gravity, atmosphere, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. Our planet is where we function optimally. Our gravity is six times stronger than on the moon. How our school books portray the phases of the moon. It's what people believe now. Notice how the Earth is the moon's center and how it goes around the Earth in a circular path. This is the geocentric view of the moon. It's what we see from Earth. The moon comes up, the moon goes down. The moon comes up again, the moon goes around the Earth. But that's not what's happening in space. It's way past time we copernicus size the moon. We need to start seeing the moon from a heliocentric point of view, as we do for everything else in the solar system. First of all, the geocentric view of the moon's phases shows the Earth stationary, sitting in the center of the moon's path for a whole moon, uh, month. But the Earth is not stationary at all. We're zooming around the sun at a very high speed anywhere between 66 and 68,000 miles an hour. Therefore, any picture of the moon going around a stationary Earth is profoundly misleading and really outright wrong. The heliocentric view of the Earth and moon moving together in space should look something like this. Notice that the moon is not going around the Earth. It's traveling along with the Earth. The space crew had been getting ready for the launch for over three years. The preparations for landing on the strange planet included gathering and studying rock samples in the Grand Canyon, exploring ancient volcano formations in the Nevada National Security Site, and looking into gas and lava vents, lava lakes, and pit craters in various locations in Hawaii. To be able to resist microgravity conditions, they learned how to walk obliquely by being strapped and suspended sideways and trying to move along walls. They had to test their limits through intensive diet and sleep regimens to make sure they'd be safe in outer space. It took them three days, three hours, and 49 minutes to reach the surface of this new world in a place called the Sea of Tranquility. They could have gone for the Ocean of Storms or the Central Bay, but they chose this place to land because it had good visibility and it was relatively smooth and easily reachable with as little propellant as possible. One of the first things they noticed when they got there was that, well, the place kind of smelled. This may sound like the beginning of a science fiction novel, but it's actually the true story about how the Apollo 11 mission landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Since then, the moon has had 12 human visitors to this day. We think of it as our neighboring space buddy, but there's still much we don't know about this mysterious satellite. And that should come as no surprise, since the moon is actually always showing us the same face. That is because the Earth and its only permanent natural satellite are in synchronous rotation, which makes us think it's always permanently still. The truth is, it's not in a fixed position, and it is actually moving further and further away from the Earth each year by 1.5 inches. Back in 1178, five monks claimed to have seen the moon being in the shape of a horn, begin to split in two from an upper point. Then, fire and sparks began to blaze from the place of separation. It was as if a dragon were spewing flames. In the next moment, the moon began to pulsate and then returned to its calm state. 
This phenomenon was repeated more than 10 times, and the flames took different shapes each time. When this nightmare was over, the moon turned black. It wasn't until the 20th century that scientists tried to explain the phenomenon. They theorized that a large asteroid collided with the moon at the time, and it was this asteroid that should be blamed for creating the Giordano Bruno crater, 15 Brooklyn bridges wide. But in that case, millions of tons of fragments from the asteroid would have hit the Earth as well. And then, people would have seen an incredible meteor shower. It would have been very bright, and the memories of it would definitely have been in the archives. But that didn't happen. Now, the phenomenon the monks observe seems questionable. Perhaps they did see an asteroid fall. Only it was falling on the Earth itself, and they perceived the light from the burning meteorite as something sinister happening on the moon. Or maybe the monks were simply imagining things. There's no witnesses to this event other than them. Another unusual phenomenon is the blue and red lights on the moon. They can be seen when it's horn-shaped. And this occurs most often in the Aristarchus crater. The flashes come and go very quickly, almost like lightning. In fact, this is electricity. Tidal forces are to blame for this too. They cause mechanical stress to build up in the rocks. This can produce an electric field, which creates the blue flashes that have surprised many amateur astronomers. When the night is dark and clear, it seems like you can touch a full moon. But if you wanted to do it, you'd have to travel up to 250,000 miles. Still, there is water on the moon. Not puddles or lakes, but grains of water ice exist in permanently shadowed parts near the moon's poles. Scientists think that water got on the moon a long time ago, during a period when both the moon and Earth were constantly struck by asteroids and comets, which contained water ice. This process may have even helped us get our own lakes and oceans, not just the moon's icy water. Newer research says that the moon's interior already had water, and it went to the surface during volcanic activity. The same might have happened on our planet, too. Out of 200 moons in our solar system, our moon is the fifth biggest one. Jupiter's moon Ganymede is the biggest one, almost 1.5 times bigger than ours. Apollo 11 was the mission where humankind first landed on the moon. It was a very important moment, broadcast all over the world. But it was almost interrupted by a huge windstorm that was going on in Australia back then. Parker Dish was placed there, which was something we used to get the broadcast signals from the moon. The moon is not a perfect circle. It's more in the shape of an egg, with the thicker end pointing toward us. There can also be starbursts on the moon. We can blame this on meteorites that fall on the surface. Because the moon has no atmosphere, asteroids that approach it don't burn up. Having a lot of weight and speed, they cause an explosion on impact. And here on Earth, we see it as a starburst. For example, on May 13, 1972, there was a meteorite impact of 1,000 tons of TNT near where Apollo 14 landed. If we lived much earlier, we might have witnessed constant bright flashes on the moon's surface. All the craters there are formed by such meteor strikes. So imagine the fireworks that were there years ago. And a lot of those meteorites were even useful too. They brought water with them. Yes, there is water on the moon. NASA confirmed this fact after studies with the SOFIA telescope. It was mounted on an airplane. The observations were made from the upper atmosphere of the Earth. At such an altitude, the dry air allowed the telescope to see even the smallest details. Water might have been in the craters at the poles of the moon. These places have never seen light, and the water there might be encased in ice. But Sophia found water on the sunlit surface of the moon. Of course, it's only H2O molecules that are present in the dust layers. But that's something. If we manage to collect all this water, we'll get very little of it. In comparison, the Sahara Desert has about 100 times more water than we found on the moon. But an even more unusual phenomenon is happening there right now. The moon is actually rusting, just like a piece of old metal. For rust to appear, we need iron, water, and oxygen. Lunar soil has enough iron in it, and as we've already learned, there's some water too. The last piece of the puzzle is oxygen. 
Everyone knows there's no atmosphere on the moon, and we can't breathe there. But oxygen is still present. The solar wind brought it there. The wind from our warm star moves at an extremely high speed. It scrapes oxygen from the upper parts of our atmosphere and carries it further through space. Eventually, the wind with the oxygen molecules reaches the moon. Voila! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.